Good morning, Wolfpack. I'm Darren Francis. And I'm Dion Gandy. Today is Thursday, May 11th, and we're here with your morning announcements. Summer enrichment classes will be offered again this year. These courses will not be for credit and are intended for you to enjoy the class and the subject with your peers. The deadline to register is tomorrow at 5 p.m. Senior rally was a fun time. Let's see how that went. That rally sure was a lot of fun, especially since I played with the marching band one last time. I am going to miss these rallies. Yeah, I'm also going to miss the rallies. And now, let's pass it over to Damon and Sterling for In the News. Good morning, Wolfpack. I'm Damon Ramos. And I'm Sterling Lede, and this is your In the News update. Last night, CNN hosted a town hall in New Hampshire with Trump in attendance. For many, the 70-minute town hall-style interview on CNN provided the first long look at the former president and frontrunner for the Republican nomination since he left the Oval Office. For Trump, it was something of a re-injection into the main vein of American politics. Some of the things he said involved him claiming to have finished building a wall between Mexico and the U.S., reiterating his false claim that the 2020 election was rigged, and defending his request for Georgia officials to overturn the 2020 election result in their state. He also claimed that he is inclined to pardon many of the January 6th insurrectionists, saying that they, are, they were there with love in their hearts, and describing the event as a beautiful day. On Thursday, Treasury Secretary Janet L. Yellen downplayed the possibility that President Biden could essentially ignore the debt limit by invoking the 14th Amendment, calling the idea legally questionable. With lawmakers in the Biden administration locked on a standoff for, o over whether and how to raise the debt ceiling which caps how much money the federal government can borrow. Ms. Yellen warned that, lawmakers of the, warned lawmakers that the United States could run out of money to pay its bills by the, on time by June 1st. The brinkmanship has raised questions about whether the Biden administration can act on its own to raise the $31.4 trillion borrowing cap by re relying on a clause in the 14th Amendment, stating that the validity of the public debt of, of the United States authorized by law includes debts incurred for payment and of pensions and bounties for services in suppressing insurrection or rebellion shall not be questioned. Following the war in Ukraine, Japan has said that they will be providing $1 billion to help Ukraine's neighbors in taking refugees from the war-stricken country. Japanese Finance Minister Shunichi Suzuki said to reporters that besides confirming the results of our, of our financial aid to Ukraine so far, they would also like to discuss how to strengthen the co cooperation with international financial institutions and help Ukraine's neighboring countries. It has also been confirmed that the UK has donated Storm Shadow cruise missiles to Ukraine. The donation of the Storm Shadow missiles complements long-range systems previously gifted to Ukraine, as well as Ukraine's own Neptune cruise missiles. 
Tonight at 11.59 Eastern Time, Title 42, the pandemic era policy that immediately expels immigrants without providing asylum hearings expires. It will be replaced by Title 8 that will allow migrants to apply for legal pathways to enter the United States with Homeland Security officials predicting about 10,000 migrants per day will try to cross into the U.S. after Title 42 lifts. Well, that's all the news we have for you today, Wolfpack. I'm Damon Ramos. And I'm Sterling Day. Back, Back to, to the, the Anchors. anchors. Well, that's all we have for you today, Wolfpack. I'm Dion Gandy. And I'm Darren Francis. And remember, the strength of the pack is the wolf. And the strength of the wolf is the pack. Happy, Happy National, National Eat What You Want, Day, Wolfpack. Wolfpack.